With me is the Framework Laptop. It's from a brand new company founded on the vision of upgradable, customizable, and repairable products. You see, few laptops these days are upgradable at all. And even the ones that are, it tends to be only a couple of components, like say the RAM, the storage, and Wi-Fi. At the time of purchasing, you're often left trying to predict what your usage will be over the next couple of years. Take buying a brand new Apple laptop. Either you're stressing that you didn't configure it with powerful enough components, or you're worried that you upgraded it too much and wasted money. What's worse is many companies with laptops that are not upgradable charge you through the roof to configure a higher spec model at the time of purchase. So, Framework's mission certainly sounds appealing. Now, when this laptop was released, it was so hyped, I thought no way is it going to be a good laptop. I was predicting one of my Josh specials where I completely ripped the product apart. If you'd like to see some examples of those, I'll post links in the description below. Anyway, I was truly expecting this laptop to be crap, feel cheaply made, and be bulky. I mean, we've heard from manufacturers for years that the reason laptops aren't upgradable is because it makes them better. Thinner, higher build quality, etc, etc. Well, I'm delighted to say that the only crap here is what manufacturers have been telling us. This laptop is excellent. It is crystal clear that the product management team of this laptop has a rare gift for understanding the consumer and that the company is actually able to execute on their vision. Let's make this real. The majority of time that people use a laptop, they are looking at the screen, typing on the keyboard, using the trackpad, or they are carrying it around in their backpack. Therefore, as long as the performance is good enough that the laptop doesn't slow you down, the baseline things you need are a good display, comfortable keyboard and trackpad, no uncomfortable heat or fan noise, and a lightweight machine. Honestly, I can't think of many laptops that gets these fundamentals right. My Dell XPS 9310, which has been my daily driver for the past 12 months, gets quite warm to the touch. My Spectre X360 14 has fans that constantly come on when doing lightweight tasks. Other than the MacBook Pro 14, which will send you broke if you buy it, this is the only other laptop I can think of that ticks these boxes. Let's double click into this. This laptop has one of the most comfortable keyboards I've ever used. I'm not joking. Ample key travel, satisfying click, a nice filling coding on the keys, and it has no surprises in its layout. For example, controls like switching the function keys to their regular functions or turning on the backlight are where you'd expect them to be. There's just no silliness here, which you see in other manufacturers' keyboards, like light-colored keys with light-colored backlight making the keys hard to find in certain lighting conditions. Trackpads are something that if they're bad, you notice them. If they're good, you don't. And this one is good enough that you don't even notice it's there. The display is excellent. It's bright, has great contrast, and with its decently high resolution of 2256 by 1504 pixels, everything looked super crisp. So much so that I was comfortable using it with window scaling at 125%. This enabled me to see a ton of information on the 13.5 inch screen. Plus, because this screen is a 3 by 2 aspect ratio, applications that go down the page can really benefit by showing more information on screen. For example, office applications, software development IDEs, and even web browsers. To quantify this, you can see that this laptop shows a whopping 49 rows of Excel. Switching to color accuracy, this panel isn't going to win any awards, but it's also good enough for most people. The temperatures you feel while using the laptop are also a high point. It didn't get overly warm to the touch for basic usage like browsing the web, doing office work, etc. Even when the CPU was pushed under maximum load, the temperatures you'd feel were warm but not uncomfortable. When compared to competing laptops around the middle of the pack, this is a good result considering this laptop only has one fan. Now, I've got this far through the review but haven't talked about the laptop's actual claim to fame. It's upgradable. And I mean fully upgradable. Heck, even the motherboard with the processor and fan is upgradable. There are so many thoughtful things that have gone into this laptop's upgradability. It comes with a screwdriver, the few screws it has remain in the back cover after you've unscrewed them, the keyboard deck easily slides out, everything is properly labeled, and there are plenty of helpful manuals and videos on the Framework website. I like how they've done the upgradable ports too. And what's cool is many of the ports are high end. The USB-C ports are the fastest USB 4 ones, also supporting charging. The USB-A ports are the fast 10 gigabit 3.2 Gen 2 speeds. For an upgradable laptop, the build quality is actually surprisingly good. It also looks really good sitting on a desk, 
and it's very lightweight. That's the first thing I noticed about it. It makes taking it out and about with you, as well as using it on your lap, a very comfortable experience. The camera on the webcam is on the better end of what's I've reviewed. It's a 1080 webcam that supports 60 frames per second, so not the garbage 720 resolution potato cams you still find in many laptops. However, the mic seems to pick up a low background hiss. Plus, it has shutters for both the mic and camera, which makes it an excellent laptop for those who go to the bathroom while on a Zoom call. And for the developers and tech enthusiasts among us, there is phenomenal Linux support. The best I've seen providing pre-release laptops to major distros and complete transparency over what is required to get some of their newer hardware working, like the fingerprint reader. The battery life is quite good. I reduced the brightness by half, which on this laptop is still really bright. Then I ran a Netflix video on repeat over Wi-Fi. I recorded over 7.5 hours, and I'm sure you could have got even more if you lowered the brightness further. Pricing is very reasonable on this laptop. I bought the Performance Config for US$1,399. It came with the Intel i7-1165G7, 16GB of RAM and a 512GB SSD. Since this laptop is good for similar tasks to one of my favourite and most recommended laptops, the Dell XPS, I'll compare its pricing to that one. At the time of filming, that laptop was $1,100 for the same config, but with a lower resolution Full HD screen. So for $300 more, this laptop is upgradable, has a slightly larger, higher resolution display, and a more comfortable keyboard. The Dell, on the other hand, does feel more premium and has better speakers. By the way, you can buy the Framework laptop as a do-it-yourself build, without a copy of Windows. So if you're comfortable using Linux, you'll save some money and make this an even better deal. And lastly, there is an active and passionate community behind this laptop. If you have questions or require help, people are quick to respond with solutions that actually make sense. Not the generic support messages we get from most tech companies, i.e. reinstall your laptop. All right, so here are the cons with the Framework laptop. The speakers aren't great, they don't get that loud, and they lack a powerful crisp soundstage that you'd hear on something like a MacBook Pro. Also, they are downward facing and the sound doesn't travel that well through the chassis. So if you are using the laptop on your lap or watching media in bed, you may find that the sound isn't loud enough. Keep in mind, in my B-roll, showing the decibels I measured, decibels are exponential. So the difference between this laptop's volume and the MacBook Pro's is quite substantial. Now, of course, being a framework laptop, the speakers are designed to be upgraded, but at this point, unfortunately, there aren't any better ones available. Now let's talk performance. Right now, this laptop is only available with an Intel 11th Gen Ultrabook CPU, which is certainly not the most powerful CPU going around. AMD's Ryzen 5000 series for Ultrabooks is more powerful, particularly in multi-core, and they require less power to achieve equivalent performance. So an AMD laptop will run cooler and quieter apples to apples. Speaking of Apple, they of course have their excellent M1 chip line that has an even better power to performance ratio. So the conundrum here is even though this laptop is upgradable, there isn't a lot of reason to upgrade it given the current processors available. You see, performance of a laptop really needs to be a balance of the components, otherwise the slowest part will slow down the whole thing. For example, there is little need to put 64GB of RAM in a laptop with the processor that this one has. Most tasks requiring that much RAM also require a far more powerful CPU or graphics. Well, there is a bit of good news here. Firstly, the processor and motherboard itself is upgradable, so hopefully the framework team releases a more powerful variant in the future, although other companies have promised such things before and failed to deliver. Secondly, the framework team have done a great job with this processor. It's one of the best performing implementations of Intel's 11th Gen i7 I've ever benchmarked. In Cinebench R23, which maxes out the CPU, it got the second highest score I've recorded with an Intel Ultrabook processor. That crown is held by the HP NV14, a larger and heavier laptop. But you can see that the framework laptop's performance is still nowhere near the Ryzen 5800U in the Acer Swift X. The reason this laptop achieves its performance is because it initially draws 50 watts of power and then drops down to 27, so that the processor doesn't overheat. Talking about this heat, this processor hits a toasty 100 degrees Celsius when pushed. That being said, the single fan cooling solution is surprisingly effective. I only recorded a minimal drop in performance when the laptop was continuously pushed to the max for 10 minutes. And if you are wondering if this laptop is able to run at full speed on battery, if you set the performance mode to best performance, it is.
What all this techno babble means is that this laptop is going to be plenty powerful for those browsing the web, watching videos, using Office applications, and honestly light to medium weight software development. But if you need a high performance laptop right now, this ain't it. The next con is around the fan noise. It's a really odd situation. For light use, this laptop is really quiet. However, under max performance, the fan gets really loud. This is likely because this laptop has only one fan, when most of the competing laptops have two. And it therefore has to spin that single fan fast to cool the processor. This seems to be where Framework has sacrificed the most in its design. Yes, it's upgradable, but it appears the space that they needed to make it so has come from the cooling design. That being said, for many buyers, you won't need to run the processor at max, so the trade-off may be fine for you. Now, occasionally, when the fan comes on, it does not turn off. I checked Task Manager to ensure there were no rogue processors running. Even closing the lid would not turn off this fan. I literally had to shut down the laptop. Please note, this and all my testing wasn't the original BIOS that the laptop came with. I did check Frameworks Community and saw that a couple of beta BIOSes have been released, which is good. So I upgraded, and thus far haven't noticed it reoccurring. Although the next one is a con, in my mind it's not that concerning. Don't expect to receive your laptop fast. This is a small company. I placed my order on September 22nd and received the laptop on November 4th. It took about one and a half months to arrive. As I said, I personally think this is fine. And lastly, if you've watched to this point in the video, you'll have noticed that this display is quite reflective. In most of my indoor use cases, I didn't find this to be much of an issue. But if you do have bright lights behind you, it definitely could be. Okay, so let's wrap. I like this laptop a lot, way, way more than I thought, and honestly, it truly competes with some of the most premium laptops major manufacturers have out there. If the sound was a bit better, I'd definitely choose this over my Dell XPS 9310 that I've been using as my daily driver for the last year. In fact, I'd even consider it over my ridiculously expensive MacBook Pro 14 that I just purchased as my new daily driver for 2022. In terms of who should buy it, lots of you. I think it's a great laptop for students, casual users working from home, and honestly, it's a phenomenal laptop for programmers, mainly due to the comfortable keyboard, the amount of code you'll see on screen, the lack of heat that you'll feel while coding, and strong Linux support. Now, there are a couple of caveats here. If you are someone who is fussy about loud, high-quality audio, this isn't for you, get a MacBook Pro. Or if you need to do intensive programming right now, such as running multiple virtualized environments to test highly scalable systems, get something with a Ryzen processor, for example, the Yoga Slim 7 Pro. And clearly, goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway, this is a no-go for gamers and content creators. Well, that's all for today, folks. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that like button and get subscribed. Not only does it show your appreciation for the insane amount of work that goes into making these, but as I always say, it makes my mother very proud. Oh, and make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, where I post mini reviews and thoughts on tech before my full review on this channel. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day, and I will catch you later.